Hey guys, welcome to another Trade Genius Podcast. Bob and Phil here as always. Guys, with as much as the market has been going up, and yes, we've been warning you that a crash is coming. Well, we got more data to tell you that it's just a matter of time now. We should be much lower. You're going to want to see this data. It's very important. So let's dive in. Trade Genius. Hey guys, really briefly before we jump into this video, appreciate all the likes and subscribes. And if you can ring that notification button, that really helps us out. In addition to that, if you guys don't mind, head over to tradegenius.co, check out our specials we have over there. There's a number of different specials with different packages for all different experience types. If you're more into education, we have a package for that. If you'd just like to get into the room, primarily we have a package for that as well, where you can see where we're calling out trades and things like that live and also posting signals into our Discord signal rooms. So check it out, tradegenius.co. Appreciate you doing that. Okay, Bob. So so the leading indicators or leading economic indicators, otherwise known as LEI, a lot of people aren't aware of this basket of indicators, but it's really important to know where we are with those things because ultimately they don't lie and, and whether or not the market is agreeing with them at any given time, sooner or later, the market does catch up to them or catch down in this case. Yeah, Phil, um, we have, we're seeing massive divergence into what the stock market is supposed to be signaling right now versus what the economic economic indicators are are telling us actual data and this is the basically the 13th straight month we have weakness and it's becoming more broad based and I'm sure we don't have to tell our listeners that um, what's happening out there, they can see it with their, their own lying eyes, that economic trends are, are not favoring, you know, a, a new economic bull market. And just to touch on the stock market as opposed to that is that a lot of times they diverge because of, of the liquidity that we're seeing. And I think that is coming to an end. So, and we'll talk more about that in the coming days, because I think people are going to now truly see what happens when liquidity exits exits the banking system, but I digress. So let's flip to the next chart and just show you how widespread this is, Phil. Look at all the areas that have turned red. And, you know, economic indicators, leading economic indicators are the ones that foreshadow the future. Lagging economic indicators are stuff like um, unemployment data. You know, they basically tell you the story after the fact. But leading indicators are like, you know, new housing starts, new building permits, you know, things of that nature, job openings, and all those things have been going the wrong way. You know, this next chart kind of gives it to you in a more of a visual, and it's just literally collapsing, Phil. And so um, a lot of times the stock market is the last to know. There was a really, really great, uh, not that I want to pump somebody else's uh, site, but there was a former Bank of America analyst that was on CNBC. And the only reason why I'm interested in that is because she basically was batting down their narrative and explained what's happening in the stock market is that everybody's now running to the last lifeboats, you know, are the basically the large cap uh, NASDAQ companies because they, they have the best moats. But now that you're looking at companies like NVIDIA that are trading at 29 times sales 25 times revenue and you know just to put that in perspective for people look when you invest in a company you want to get number one how fast am i going to get my initial investment back okay and so scott neely was the ceo of sun microsystems and in 2000 his company was trading for it. This is the dot-com bubble. Sun Microsystem was the NVIDIA of its day, and it was trading for 10 times sales. And people were like pushing him, why can't you get, <clears throat> get your stock price higher? And he said, guys, are you basically, are you insane? This was in a written letter. He said, for me to be able to give my clients uh, the full value of this company is that I would have to give in dividends as much revenue as I make <clears throat> for the next 10 years. <laughs> And he said, that means there's no cost of sales, there's no administrative expense, there's no taxes, you know, oh, and there's no dividends, but I have to pay you dividends. He said, it's just not going to happen. Well, six months later, going into two years later, his stock dropped 90%. And they were the darling, they were the AI of this generation. And AI is not nearly, people are hyping AI like it's a moat. Sun Microsystems had a moat. You know, they had the mid-range computer systems, okay? AI is just software. 
you know, Elon Musk decided he wanted to get back in the game. Well, guess what? Now, you know, we go from chat GPT, we go to Bing. Now we're going to have Elon Musk is what, truth GPT. There's going to be 60,000 other ones. going to be like the car companies in the 1900s. Nobody's going to have a moat with AI. And then what's happening too with AI, Phil, and the reason I'm bringing this up because it's very important for the stock price, is that in Europe right now, it, they're going to make it illegal for them to scrape data, okay? And all chat GPT is doing is going to all the forums and they're, they're, they're scraping data. Well, Pretty soon, everybody's going to throw anything of value behind a paywall, okay? And that AI is not going to get to it. So it's going to be problematic for people. And so AI is the one that's been lifting these NASDAQs. That's why Google's up. That's why Microsoft's up. That's why NVIDIA's up. AI. And when, when people realize that AI, right, at this current form, all AI is a really, 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 really powerful FAQ system, okay? It's basically a massive file storage system <clears throat> that anybody can write code on. You're going to see that whole part of the stock market collapse and it's going to catch down to these uh these leading indicators that we have here uh the flip back let's throw the other chart up on this just so we can <clears throat> keep beating this thing up this signals recession every time we're in the zero zone right now phil i'm gonna throw it back to you <clears throat> so i can cough that you take it from here for a second i apologize yeah so uh, as you guys can see this chart here uh the gray shaded area of this chart is is where the recessions are historically and the the red line is basically when the leading indicators are signaling recessionary prints okay and so we're in a situation here where we've been signaling for quite a few months now something similar happened in the dot-com crash we were signaling first and then the recession came in the uh, 08 09 the leading indicators basically tanked as the recession started so this is fair warning here right we're not just in i i know we've been warning about the larger picture here for a while um we've been playing the ins and outs of the markets but this is coming to a head what we've been warning about for several months is really going to start to manifest and what we mean by that is typically in these situations where the market finally does catch down to these indicators it's week after week after week of red to the point where you think like the market's never going back up something's broken and that's just part of the cycle it will bounce and you just have to be you know we're going to do our best to keep you abreast of that obviously with folks in the room we're going to give you more details but you know we're going to get a bounce out of it but it's going to feel like it's just never going to end and that's when usually these bear markets come to a head in regards to also what's going on with you know we're a consumer economy and one last slide i'd like to put up here you look at the red book index which is basically a measure of retail sales okay this is a weekly year over year chart so every week it compares last year's same week of the year last year and we're just nose diving year over year this isn't just a small pullback this is a serious collapse of retail activity and guys we're a consumer economy i would look at this as a forecast of what your next gdp prints are going to be okay remember two quarters of gdp contraction typically is a recession the last one that we had late last year you know obviously the administration and some of the economists that are uh, on that side of the spectrum said well you know you can't really call it a recession even though technically the uh, the contraction of the gdp was met because of the employment activity was strong and that's true but i still think the why do you call it a recession is because your gdp is receding you either are increasing your economic output or you're not i don't care what the employment data is saying and we all know the employment data is all hosed up anyway so i think we did have a brief mild recession and i would call it basically a pre-recession where the bigger recession the bigger downturn is coming it's just that we got weakness a bit early and i think primarily that was because we were so over the top with so much liquidity that was put into the system that we had so much air in the system that just the act of taking down that initial uh drawdown with the fed uh doing this quantitative uh, tapering qt i think caused the the numbers to contract pretty quickly out the top now they've stabilized and we've since had you know more positive gdp numbers but i do think that that's a prelude to what's going to come here and, and it's going to come with some force and so bottom line is you can't ignore these in, these indicators you know they don't lie it's much like the yield curve which we haven't touched on in a while but the two versus ten inverted yield curve which has bottomed and now that thing telling us that we've probably got well at this point we've probably got now about 92 more weeks of pain ahead of us which takes us well through uh 2024 i just don't see any reason why things are going to be different here bob i just think that all of these indicators that don't ever lie are telling us what it's just a matter of this market really kind of catching down to reality I guess is the best way to view it at this point yeah and look you know <clears throat> social media only, only ever tells you they're winners but I don't think people realize that 61 percent 
of the NASDAQ is still underneath its 200 day moving average. Yep. So <clears throat> that's how it works, right? You know, uh, nobody tells you they're losers, but you have most of the stock market are below levels where you should be taking a long term investment. And, you know, we look at the 144. So there's even more companies that are below that line. And if you look what's happening here is that you don't have copper and oil and coal and steel and iron ore collapsing into a new bull market. That just doesn't happen. And the 210 now just actually spiked another 22 or 21 basis points this morning, Phil. So all it's telling you is, and people say, you know, because we hear this stuff all the time. Oh, Bob, oh, Bob, bull market. Well, no, there's no bull market. Bull market is when 60, 70 percent of these companies are above their 50 day moving average. That's a bull market, you know. And so in 2008, we had a weekend just like we have here. I'm not saying I'm not predicting the future, but we had a Bear Stearns scare. So we had our scare with the banking and then they had an 18% rise in the um, the stock market because all was fixed. We went through an OPEX. I believe it's even a May OPEX, if I'm not sure, May or June. And then the very next week, uh, we started our, uh, our plunge with the quick, hey, we're going to ban short selling uh, lift. And then we dump 50%. So just <clears throat> don't think this stuff can't happen. This, they'll have, this stuff happens in, a, in an instant. We're, we are living in a mirage world right now, guys. You literally don't know what side of the looking glass that you're on. And it just behooves you that the cash is not flowing. And that's all you need to know about stock market valuations. If the, if the cash isn't flowing into the companies and the cash isn't flowing into the banking system, is that you will not have a bull market. And you know our thing, the whole reason why we're telling these things is, and for me personally, we're just begging you. This is, you know, people pray to God that I can get out before this whole thing collapse. Well, we've been prophesizing for you guys for six months to get your house in order here because it truly, truly, truly will fall. Fall. And it's not going to be a V bottom this time because the jobs that are going to come back aren't going to pay as much. And pe more people are rolling off into retirement. It's going to be a, a different world. I think we're going to have a longer and deeper and we'll, we'll do what they had did in the 70s. We'll get probably a bit of a malaise fill where people are just like, we'll start getting, oh, this is, oh, we can't get out of this. This sucks. America's gone. And then as soon as you hear those phrases, that's when the next generation of technology, new leadership comes in and then everything will turn back around again because everything is cyclical. No, I totally agree, Bob. And I think my prediction would be that we have an L-shaped type recovery, which is what this market is not used to. You see the Fed coming in, saving the day and V-reversing, at least in these mo in our modern era of markets. But I get the feeling that if the Fed is really not convinced that in the inflation monster is totally stamped out, that they're okay with that. They'd rather have, because sooner or later, they're going to have to come back into the market. And what they would like to do is have the conditions they had back in 08, where they could accommodate markets of need be and, and inflation wasn't an issue right away. Right now, they have to get back to that. And so really what it caught, what it is, is that they have to, we have to get to a, a deflationary cycle, right? We have to have basically the opposite happen here where they almost have to come back in because that can go out of hand too. But you, you almost have to get to that because right now, even if they get back to the 2%, right, Bob, if they were to immediately go back to accommodating, it's going to come roaring right back because we were, yeah. we're already over, you know, in the up cycle of inflation here. So it, it becomes a very, um, very sensitive reaction to any kind of easing that goes on. So I think they're happy with an L shape. You know, you're going to sacrifice a year basically of economic growth, but you know, it's like anything else, like a forest fire, you know, the green shoots afterwards are much more healthy. So I think that's what's in store yeah. for us. Yeah. And look, they want to get rid of, uh, they got to get people out of the mindset of, <clears throat> Hey, interest rates are going down. Let's flood the market with bids for houses. They want people to say, I ain't touching that. So until they can get people up that out of that mindset they're, they, they're he's going to keep going. And this morning, uh, you know, he, he effectively said just that. He said, you know, we're probably going to raise again in June. You and I called that, what, nine months ago. Uh, June, July is going to be it, guys. After that, he can't do anymore. So, uh, and we saw that because the FFR reports, the Fed Fund reports that you could see the for the dealers, we we saw June, July as as really the top in rates. And he's not going to let off the gas. Uh, he's going he's gonna to keep coasting at these rates probably. He says probably at the end of the year, but my, my guess is <clears throat> the, the data is telling us November, December, he's going to have to probably think about, because I think economic activity is going to fall off that hard going into the fourth quarter. Can you imagine going into the Christmas season with these retailers the way they are? And look at lumber, Phil. You know, you came out of the construction industry and the lumber prices are collapsing, but home builder prices, that's the other thing too. Lumber prices are collapsing, but home builder prices are still elevated. You know, and that's that, that doesn't happen. That's just a lag. They've always followed lumber prices down because lumber prices only fall when there's no demand for lumber. 
lumber and lumber goes into buildings. And so it's going to be really interesting. So you got lumber and copper and steel and iron ore. The only thing I know that's still up, because I was just talking to two general contractors this morning, is concrete and cement still up, probably because some of these projects that are still out there and, and you know, getting cement facilities online. But other than that, Phil, this economic environment is pretty soft. So anyway, I don't want to turn this into a 40-minute monologue, but guys, no data is telling us that we're wrong. And leading indicators are still yet to predict more doom coming into the economy. So I thought we'd share this with you guys, and you guys are getting gifts right now. The indexes are holding up. Most of your investments with your 401k companies are tied to indexes. So, you know, he who panics first wins. So I would keep encouraging people to trim, be conservative, you know, keep an eye out on, on, you know, shifting to cash or money markets and, and things of that nature. The regional banks got hit again because Yellen's talking about, you know, more mergers. So we're just at the beginning of this baseball game, not the end. Yep, I agree. And uh, they had a walkout on the uh, debt ceiling negotiations today, which is a market pulled back a little bit. Today's OPEX, so there's a pinning effect in the market. I don't think we're going to see anything too dramatic. If we did, it could get, get out of hand because then OPEX gets upside down and then uh, that could be quite catastrophic going into the rest of the day if there is a significant drop from here. Otherwise, I think what we'll probably see is once the OPEX pinning effects wear off today, there's actually not a lot of tailwinds in the market at that point. So next week, there is quite a bit of a vacuum below us that we could fall through, especially if there's no progress. Because keep in mind, Yellen, uh, she's out of money on Monday or Tuesday. That's it. And then they're going to have to, suddenly you're going to have headlines all over the place about how parts of the government are shutting down. And so that's where we get really close to then, you know, do we make, are we able to make interest payments? Um, as Bob has pointed out, there's several things they can do to facilitate that. So we avoid a default, but I think we're getting into the thick of the chess games here in Washington and next week could be really volatile. So just bear that in mind as we uh, kind of get into Monday, Tuesday of next week. So other than that, Bob, I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, thanks guys for watching. Please hit like and subscribe and we're going to see you on tomorrow's video. Take care. Trade genius.